As a key component in the march toward network transformation, Open RAN offers both opportunity and challenge. New approaches to RAN architecture may provide benefits such as lower deployment costs and increased supply chain diversity, but it could also potentially increase network integration costs and complexity. I'm Clarence Reynolds, contributing editor at Telecom TV, and as we explore the potential of Open RAN, lots of questions remain, and here to provide some insight is Timon Sloan, general manager of ONF, the Open Networking Foundation. Welcome, Timon. It seems that there have been some recent changes at the Open Networking Foundation. ONF spun off a startup called Ananki last year, and just recently Intel announced that it had acquired Ananki. Can you tell us more about how all of this impacts ONF's work? Yeah, thanks, Clarence. Uh, great question. There has been a lot going on at ONF, and it is all connected to Open RAN and 5G. And last year, around September, we had announced that uh, ONF had spun out this for-profit Ananki that was focused on uh, productizing private 5G and Open RAN-enabled private 5G for the Industry 4.0 movement. And then uh, quite recently, uh, it was announced that Intel acquired Ananki and uh, a number of pieces uh, shifted around between ONF and Ananki and, uh, and Intel. And so at this point in time, um, you know, ONF and Ananki have uh, you know, separated ways um, instead of being uh, connected with a common uh, executive team. And that's allowing ONF to really focus on its open source mission, its uh, you know, SDN disaggregation uh, focus, and all the work that we're doing in Open RAN and with the SD RAN project. ONF has been very active in Open RAN, particularly around the RAN Intelligent Controller, or RIC. Can you share some more details on the role that ONF plays compared to other industry bodies like the ORAN Alliance and TIP? Yeah, good questions again. So uh, it's true. So you know, ONF has always been focused on disaggregation and open source and driving transformation across our industry, as you know. And you know, a few years ago, we um, took on the ambitious mission of building an open source RIC and um, really trying to help drive disaggregation of, uh, of the RAN ecosystem and, and architecture. So you know, the ORAN Alliance focuses on the architecture and specifications. And what ONF is doing is focusing on building open source pieces that fit into that architecture, as well as open source solutions that can go into trial with operators. So the two are very, very compatible. You have standards on one hand, and then you have open source exemplar implementations being created by ONF to be able to prove out the architecture and uh, actually lead a bit so that where there are parts of the architecture that are not yet well-defined, ONF has stepped in to do uh, exemplar implementations and then provide that feedback back into the specification process at ORAN. Deutsche Telekom and ONF announced an open RAN trial in Berlin last year. Can you share an update on this trial? Yeah, so that trial was related to all this work and uh, Deutsche Telekom and an ecosystem of another eight vendors uh, put together and worked uh, collaboratively on building an open RAN solution following the ORAN architecture using uh, components both from the industry, closed source components and open source components and combining those together into a solution that is uh, live in Berlin as we speak. So that solution uses um, proprietary solutions or proprietary components for the RU, DU, and CU. That's sort of the horizontal disaggregation that most people talk about in Open RAN. And then, but Open RAN also includes a RIC, a controller, and then X apps that run on top of that controller. And that's really where ONF is focused, where ONF has built an open source RIC and a set of exemplar X apps with uh, ecosystem partners to prove out the full disaggregated uh, vision of ORAN. And that's what's been deployed at Deutsche Telekom with great success. It's been a very, very exciting project and we're looking for more to come. And many in the industry are saying that a new approach to ORAN is needed, not necessarily from vertically integrated hardware centric companies, but rather from software driven vendors. What's your take on where the solutions lie? Well, exactly. When you have you know, all these pieces, RU, DU, CU, RIC, and X apps, it's a pretty complicated architecture. Somebody's got to put it all together. And uh, most of that is software. And of course, that's where the world is going. Software is eating the world. Software expertise is critical for all companies in all industries, um, no less so for the telecom industry. 
So in our experience, putting these solutions together, operators do need help. They need an integrator of some form. Historically, the incumbent vendors provided all that vertical integration and uh, delivered complete solutions to operators. So at, uh, in the D DT trial with OpenRAN, uh, ONF is playing a, a pretty significant piece of that role, putting the pieces together. But we also have you know, a suite of vendors that are involved and very active, uh, and you can you know, see the details on our website. But you know, what I'd also point to is that ONF has been at this for some time. So the DT trial is about a year old or a little bit less. But uh, you know, open, um, open broadband is a whole initiative that ONF uh, really championed, and, and that those solutions are now in production with Tier 1 operators worldwide. This is you know, open pond networking. And we learned a lot from that journey. That was a five-year-plus journey, building open source components, blending those with uh, closed source uh, components from vendors. And uh, I've seen a lot of different kinds of integrators uh, come in and, uh, and operators try a lot of different things. I think at the start, operators really tried to do it on their own, um, but discovered that they really do need a, an external third party who can really focus on this. I've seen operators who try to use IT consulting houses to, to build the solutions. I've seen operators that use uh, vendors that are well-versed in telecom, but still with a, a software bent and a software focus. And from what we've seen so far, I think the latter is turning out to be the most successful model, where you have uh, external consulting uh, or consulting houses, vendors, who are uh, maybe contributing some of their own pieces, but also then integrating other pieces together, but who have you know the software expertise, the cloud expertise, they're really investing in that level of skill, and they're really training their own uh, internal staff. And those are the arrangements uh, and the vendor relationships that tend to be yielding the strongest results. Timon, thank you for the update and your insights. Much appreciated. Well, thank you, Clarence. It's been great being with you today.